This is part 5 of renovating a vintage twin tangy type model steam engine. And this is knifing putty. Despite its name, it is only used for filling small indentations in wood or metal. The knifing part refers to the fact that you spread it on the wood with a knife. And this knifing putty is in no way connected with any serial killing applications. And before the voices returned, I went and bought some more cellulose thinners. And I'm putting the cellulose thinners in my container. I never mentioned in the other videos, but these containers must be made of a polythene material, as cellulose thinners will dissolve most plastics. I always recycle my cellulose thinners, and just for a change it's nice to start with some fresh stuff. But as you will see, it will not be like this for very long. The first thing to go into the thinners bath is the flywheel and the crank assemblies. I'm rotating the flywheel so that it gets a good coating of cellulose thinners. And while the cellulose thinners is working on the flywheel, I'm also applying the thinners to one of the bed castings. This process really does take a long time. You have to give sufficient time for the cellulose thinners to eat into the paint. And I haven't videoed that part because that would be very tedious. This is bad enough. This looks a very easy thing to do, but there is a little bit of a technique in the way you apply the thinners with the brush. This is quite a stiff brush. But if I don't apply the thinners properly, it splashes everywhere, including splashing onto me. And I don't really want it to do that, because it says in the instructions, do not handle it. Well, I get very little of this on my fingers, or on any other part of me for that matter. And it's down to the way that you apply it with the brush. I am wearing a pair of glasses, because I have to wear a pair of glasses to see what I'm doing these days. But if you don't wear glasses, it's essential to wear safety glasses. You don't want to get any of this in your eye. Really, looking at it, I should have removed the eccentrics, but I'm very careful, and I'm not clumsy, so I'm not going to damage the eccentrics. But if you're in any doubt whatsoever, remove as many of the parts as possible. I noticed that the crank webs are actually keyed onto the shaft, so these are non-removable. So I'm going to have to look at how the actual flywheel is held to the centre of the crankshaft, because it moves around a bit. I'm taking this opportunity to clean up the crossheads, the connecting rod and the big ends. And I'm scraping off some of the more difficult grime with the ruler. I know this is quite boring and very tedious, more so for me in real time, but I thought I would show it in its entirety just for a change. I'm now cleaning up the water pump assembly. This is particularly grimy and it's going to need a little more than cellulose thinners to get it clean. More about that later. Earlier on in the video, I mentioned the importance of reading the instructions regarding the use of solvents like cellulose thinners and chemicals in general. Once upon a time, when I was very young and more stupid than I am currently, a friend of mine and myself decided to spray this old van in a very enclosed garage space. And both of us very quickly got quite drunk. In fact, thinking about it, it was a cheap way of getting drunk at the time. But it was the 60s and things like that used to happen. No health and safety in those days. Thankfully, neither of us died, and life carried on as normal for many years. We did, however, incur lots of drips on the van. The paint ran everywhere. Here are the two castings, nicely cleaned up. I'll give them a final coat of brand new thinners before I paint them. I always recycle my cellulose thinners that I use for degreasing and cleaning models. I always make sure I have an empty can handy. And I place a rag, any sort of old rag will do, in the top of the filler cap. Pretty much like you see here in fact. Then using a funnel, I place that into the rag and very carefully pour the contents of my container, which was clean, which is now very dirty, into the funnel. And I let this filter through the rag into the other can. This way all the solid parts get stuck to the rag. And I end up with dirty but not too bad thinners in the second can. I would of course never use the contents of this second can for anything other than degreasing. For paint thinning, I would use the new stuff. That's it for now in this particularly boring episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found some of it useful.